everybody. I'm going to do a second video. I decided I'm at the National Civil War Medicine uh, Museum of Civil War Medicine in Frederick, Maryland. And a lot of the exhibits uh, I just did were downstairs. And we've got some people up here, but that's okay. Uh, I chose to do the second video pretty much so I could upload it right away. This is being shot on my phone, so uh, for ease of use and uh, getting it uploaded quicker, I just decided to take another one. Plus, there's so much downstairs that I ran out of time. And there's a little bit upstairs here, too. Um, so to address a couple other things that I didn't address before, the Civil War, a lot of people don't really understand, the Civil War actually gave rise to the ambulance system, the hospital system, and, and emergency care basically as we understand it in America today. Um, it's very important, as I've always said, the Civil, all roads lead back to the Civil War. And um, it wasn't until uh, the middle 19th century that we actually had a, in a, an established an effective hospital system um, and of course that was really born specifically here in the city of Frederick, Maryland. This is a tea set that was actually presented to uh, Jonathan Letterman, um, one of the uh, most notable surgeons. He's a medical director of the Army Potomac as you can see on the sign and, and some of the soldiers were so grateful they actually present how I'll try to get the sign. You can pause that and come back. Um, but many, many soldiers, of course, were profusely grateful to the surgeons. Um, uh, to reiterate something uh, uh, in the last video, um, that there are so many myths about the Civil War and surgeons and, and being called butchers and so on and so forth that are wholly undeserved. These people did their best with what they had. They were facing a lot of new dangers, such as the mini ball, uh, new technology. They were facing diseases that had not yet been conquered like, uh, you know, bacterial diseases. I'm not talking about vaccines, but I'm talking about diseases that would require antibiotics, um, uh, you know, uh, measles, smallpox, you know, whatever, you name it. Um, these, these people had to deal with it. And it wasn't just during the fighting, and it wasn't just the soldiers. It wasn't always just because of, say, an open wound, but it was also because of being in cramped conditions, um, basically living in filth. Uh, these soldiers, uh, especially in the Confederacy, having to wear uh, the same clothes for um, sometimes weeks, months. I mean, if it's, it's hard to imagine. This is all hard for most folks to imagine, but some of these folks were uh, wearing the same pants and shirts for months. Some of them at some point had no shoes or had um, something that resembled shoes, basically, um, but they were you know, almost shredded to pieces. So again, it's very easy to make judgments. It's very easy to make judgments from afar and looking back in history. But to understand this conflict fully, you must try as hard as you can to put yourself in their shoes and to imagine what it was like in a time of, of horrible war, horrible, horrible war, thousands and thousands and thousands without modern medicine, with new um, you know, technology, new ammunition um, that took a horrendous toll. And I said it in the other video, but um, the people who stepped up to the plate, um, surgeons, nurses, um, basic caretakers, people in the neighborhood who just did whatever they could by offering up their homes, um, bringing food to the hospitals, whatsoever. These, <laughs> I'm going to get emotional again. These people stepped up to the plate in a bigger way than you could just ever imagine. And it's real easy to judge them from afar. But if you try to put yourself in these shoes, you must ask yourself one question. Would I have done any better? Could I have actually been that brave? Would I have maybe tried to close my eyes and close my blinds and just let the parade go on and, and let the wounded just shuffle about and die? Or would I have stepped up to the plate? It's real easy to say you know, one way or the other, but it's totally different when you have to put yourself in those shoes. I'm trying to avoid these people in the hall, but I, I guess we're just going to have to run into them. Anyways, that's most of what I wanted to say, and I think I covered most of the rooms that I didn't cover before. Let's see. 
this is a good one you can screenshot. A horrible time. The one thing this music museum is great about and why I love it so much is it's the opposite of glamorization. Every ward gets glamorized at some point and people put people up on pedestals and the people that do that, I think, are the people who understand this war or any war the least. People who truly understand the nature of war will be, uh, you know, will appreciate this stuff a little bit more. So here's about germ theory again. They didn't have modern antibiotics. They did not have modern medicine. These people did the best that they could. Oh, here we go. I might end up with this here. Uh, you can screenshot and come back. Let me uh, just slide that in the glass and zoom in for you. There's one screenshot. There's a screenshot. And there's the dreaded mini ball. Again, this changed warfare. The mini ball was a game changer. It didn't exist before this war and it was introduced right around the start of the war. And it was brand new. It was a softer hollow point projectile that caused immense damage. Thus all the amputations and again, getting back to the point of um, amputations and people being called butchers and so on and so forth. Another thing you have to think about is the rate, the sheer staggering rate at which these men were coming through these hospitals and through these doors. Uh, you just can't imagine. And at some point, decisions have to be made. And efficiency must be one of the top orders. They, you know, again, I mentioned this in another, uh, in the first video, but um, in any mass cal situation or mass casualty situation, um, people have to act quick. They have to do the best that they can do and they cannot save everybody or treat everybody with the care that they normally would prefer to. So keep that in your mind as well. These surgeons wanted to treat every single individually as best that they could. Circumstances did not always permit that. Try and put, your, try and put yourself in these people's shoes and imagine thousands of soldiers coming in from each battle, not just from the war, not just from one year of the war, but every battle. Thousands of soldiers coming in with every injury that you can imagine, sickness, disease, limbs that have been just about blown off. And come back to Clara Barton and finish it. That's one heck of a woman. One heck of an American woman. <sighs> I guess that's about it, guys. Um, Hopefully we'll watch the other video because I think the other one's a little bit better. It's a little bit longer and it was shot on the GoPro. Um, but at the last minute, I decided to do one more. And hopefully this gets uploaded pretty soon. But um, please come down here if you live in Maryland, if you live in uh, uh, Pennsylvania, if you live in Northern Virginia. This, I think, is a must stop just as much as any other battlefield because y you just will not fully appreciate this war until you understand what the people went through, what the soldiers went through, what the surgeons, uh, um, doctors, the nurses went through, what, what the townspeople went through. And then maybe they'll understand war a little bit better and understand why it's so horrible and why it should have never happened and why hopefully this will never, ever, ever happen again on this soil. So I'm going to close that, guys. See you on the next one.